Okay. So, this is interesting. This is the first I've heard of a game studio going to initiate a four-day work week. Now, if you know the games industry, crunch has been a big problem, <laughs> mostly with AAA studios, because I don't think indie studios have that kind of a uh, that specific kind of crunch problem with AAA studios, whereas with AAA studios like, let's say, for example, Naughty Dog, Rockstar, um, I'm sure there's um, studios in Ubisoft. I'm pretty sure there's, and there's studios in all the big publishers uh, that have this mentality. I don't want to say mentality. Usually it's uh, the scope of their projects gets so, uh, let's say, beyond scope that it becomes too unmanageable at a certain point, and that's where crunch comes in. So basically every member from the programmers to the designers to the artists have to work basically over time uh, for a month or so. Or usually it's by the last, I would say, three to four months, they would put in about 80 hours a week or so, basically the double the normal 40-hour work week. So IDOS Montreal and IDOS Sherbrooke's solution to this is a four-day, 32-hour work week. And they go uh, into a little more detail in here in their blog about um, how they plan to implement and what kind of effects they expect this transition to have. Let's just uh, take a look, shall we? Um, I'm not going to read the whole blog. I'll link it in the description down below. But I'm just going to read the key points that I thought were pretty important. <clears throat> so this is from David Ann Fossey, the head of studio at Studio Er. So I don't know why I said that. Idos Montreal. And right here. He says, um, when asked, the big news is out, Idos Montreal and Idos Sherbrooke will switch to the four-day work week. Can you tell us more about this initiative and how the transition will happen? Excuse me for a minute. All right, sorry. Um, you know, this initiative is another step towards the embodiment of the studio's values, uh, whatnot, whatnot. In the next few weeks, the Montreal and Sherbrooke studios will be officially closed on Fridays without changing the working condition currently in place nor the salaries of employees, thus switching the f from the 40-hour work week to 32 hours a week. A week. Um, I'm going to say right now, I haven't been in an environment like the like gaming studio, but I would imagine... Uh, for IDOS Montreal, who actually did have a problem with crunch just uh, a few years ago. This is an article from 2017 uh, where the, a producer from IDOS Montreal was saying that they were crunching for, uh, I believe, Deus Ex, uh, which may not have seemed right. I think it's more like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but it's not mentioned. It came out in 2017, so I'm guessing it's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, where the team was working with did have to work uh like 80 hour work weeks but i'll go into this in a little bit so back to this so basically what i'm saying is the transition is going to be pretty hectic i'd imagine uh this is a studio that used to crunch now wanted to uh, well had to end up working remotely and had to adjust to that and then went to a 40 hour work week uh apparently from what they said now to a 32 hour work week that's going to be very interesting because they have to release guardians of the galaxy soon and i'm pretty sure this game has gone gold if i'm not mistaken uh i don't know when it's coming out i actually haven't been paying much attention to it not my appeal uh it doesn't appeal to me uh, let's go back to the story uh, a blog post i'm sorry and let's continue and asked does this mean the, that the workload of the teams will have to be condensed within four days um this is interesting. David Fossey says, The idea is not to condense the working hours into four days, but rather to review our ways of doing things and, and our quality time invested with the team. Uh, with the aim of working better above all, we want to increase the productivity and well-being of our employees. Concretely, we want to reduce the time at work, but increase the quality of this time invested, whether it's on a team basis or for the studio as a whole, a promising right balance for everything. 
We want a collaborative, a real collaborative aspect so that the teams contribute to the transition, each one working to define, define the parameters and criteria for success uh, for the organization of work and deadlines. We hope that this will eliminate unnecessary time and build on efficiency, for example, by reducing internal meetings from one hour to 30 minutes, or maybe shorter, I'd imagine, if that's what you want to go for. Um, I'd imagine a, lot, a team full of artists, programmers, who have to keep working on certain assets or get rid of a bunch of bugs uh, will not want to be in meetings that range from uh, 30 minutes to an hour. So, and I, I can only imagine what that would have been like as they were like uh, on Zoom meetings and working and, and having a meeting at the same time. That must have been pretty hectic for them to manage all that. So... From here, he says he wants to, instead of like having the workload condensed, which I think will inevitably happen, I know that's what he's saying is not going to happen, but the change is going to be really dramatic, I'd imagine. If you've been working at IDOS for, let's say, <laughs> like the last two years, which would have been a weird, weird time to be working at a game studio, or in the entertainment industry in general, um, where you had one normal year and then a really crazy year, then, and you go to this, and you'd have to imagine, well, you have a bunch of goals and tasks that you need to finish, and a lot of milestones you and your team need to reach. And now you have, you won't be working on, on a whole day, basically. They're off Fridays now, so you, you're going to have to push a lot of things up front, which I go back to this and say, how is it going to affect the release of Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, I heard from, well, I mean, I didn't hear. I saw a tweet from Daniel Ahmad, or Ahmed, that uh, Nintendo workers in Japan actually do work a 40-hour work week and have a pretty stable, like, 80,000 US dollar salary, which is pretty solid and amazing if that's possible. Uh, if that's true, I would mean. Because I know uh, Japan has a pretty similar and probably actually more uh, intense work culture over there than we do here. Um, moving on. Uh, over here, he mentions, what concrete changes can someone who wants to work at IDOS Montreal or IDOS Sherbrooke expect to with this new structure? Oh, he did uh, before that. And he, he did mention... Um, like, basically, it looks to me like an expansion of benefits that the company offers and why they decided to go with uh, the 32-hour work week, the four-day work week. And they mentioned uh, projects, the work projects in Iceland civil service or other companies in tech industry. I'd imagine they saw what Amazon was doing and how it affected them because I know that they recently... Not recently, but uh, notably changed to a four-hour work week. Not, not, not like delivery drivers, the software engineers. Um, so it, it looks like they did look at other, uh, they had basically had references to go off of, which was, was pretty smart on their part, but let, we'll see how it works out. Uh, as far as uh, concrete changes, he doesn't really get into specifics. Um, really, he says he just wants the, the aim of improving quality of life. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what you would normally do for any kind of management restructure. Well, this isn't a management restructure. Well, it kind of is since you're, like, you're restructuring the way you're working. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's just he wants to retain their employees, their talented employees, because uh, that's a massive issue well it's not really an issue depending on how you want to look at it uh recruit better uh people uh re reduce the rate of absenteeism and the rate of sickness i didn't know if that that's a problem or not i don't hear a lot about developers getting sick i mean obviously you hear about developers feeling bad after crunch but that's just <laughs> that's like the obvious kind of effect that would, that would have on a better management of stress and anxiety well yeah I mean, it's a stressful job. I mean, you're making products 
and services that range in the hundreds of millions <laughs> when you work at a AAA studio. And when you're responsible for that, when you're a cog in that kind of a machine, it, I would imagine stress kicks in on you. So w what I wanted to ask uh, you guys is, uh, well, actually before uh, I do, uh, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> I keep forgetting to mention that. Uh, share this, uh, contribute to the chaos, and uh, let me know what I can do to improve the videos. Thanks. Uh, but continuing on, I'm all over the place right now. Uh, wanted to ask what you guys think would affect how these guys would release their games. Or more so, how would this affect their games? Now, I'm going to skip Marvel's Avengers because I'm not interested in that. How would it affect... Well, I don't know if they're making Doom Raider again. So it, it really it's really going to affect... Guardians of the Galaxy, which is, oh boy, oh boy, after the lackluster response they've been getting from Marvel's Avengers, they need to, like, nail this one. They need to nail this one. And if this restructuring, or not, I keep saying restructuring, this transition to a four-day work week, if that's going to hurt, hurt this game, then it's going to be a failed experiment. Because I'm for, I'm for... Game developers, or the gaming industry, changing the way they work. I'm for that. I really want to see how... I really want to know whether or not they produce better games. Um, maybe you guys are like me, in a way, but I almost, almost never, ever buy games the day they release. Because I expect them to be riddled with some sort of problem that some sort of patch has to come in, some day one patch or something like that. And then it's it's like you you get a... I'm really salty over this because of Call of Duty. <laughs> I stopped playing and stopped buying Call of Duty for a while. I did get Modern Warfare, like, but like four or six months later. But it's because of stuff like adding content later or fixing the game later and not releasing the best version of the game when it's supposed to be released, even after delays. Uh, do I have to bring up Cyberpunk as, as an example? My God. So they need to nail this. And if this helps, then that's awesome. That's awesome. Then we'll see probably more studios that'll experiment with the way they work, essentially. I mean, can you imagine a studio like... Uh, like, what's a hard-ass studio? Um, Naughty Dog or uh, what's another one? Uh, what's another? Actually, hold on a second. Speaking of Naughty Dog and adjacent to Naughty Dog, Insomniac. If I recall, and you guys can let me know in the comments down below, Insomniac specifically, I think it's the North Carolina studio or whichever studio made Ratchet and Clank, that all those guys did a 40-hour work week. At least the production team. The writers probably didn't, but or the directors or producers. But the, I, I recall hearing one of the studio heads saying our team worked uh, basically 40 hours. Nobody crunched. That, that was the thing. That was the thing. Nobody crunched. And uh, let me know if that's true. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is. I'm, I mean, at least that's what the uh, person from Insomniac who was interviewed said. But like I said, I'm... That, that's really awesome to see just m more ways to operate in the gaming industry um i'm going to link this story in the description down below but it was basically uh what's her name Fleur marty she was a producer at idos montreal and she worked with the deus ex live team what the heck was deus ex live so she also uh you know she gave a talk in zurich um, this ludicrous, ludicious, that doesn't sound right, ludicious games festival where she was talking about, um, why, well, crunch is, is basically just a result of bad, uh, oversight of bad management. She mentions, uh, why if your team is working 80 hours a week for months, it's, the project is overscoped, it's under-resourced, plan isn't right, something needs to change. Yeah, that's basically almost always the reasons why crunch happens um 
And she, but she also mentioned um, how crunch can be beneficial. And this was also kind of interesting for me to read because I've uh, spoken to um, people who, like veterans of the gaming industry, I, when I went to college, I took this uh, games and narrative course and it was taught by like a 30-year veteran uh, of the games industry. He was a writer. And the last game he worked on was Elder Scrolls Online. And he was just talking about, yeah, every time we had to crunch, he just said, it's because the project was just way beyond scope at that point. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. I mean, you can't. Final Fantasy 15. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 hold on. This wasn't crunch. It was just delayed for 10 years. Yeah. Some some people were crunching at various various times of the years. That's that's I'm positive that's what had had to have happened. Uh, nonetheless, uh, she mentions over here. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um. Uh, when crunch can be a good thing, and that's when the reason you're crunching for is for a specific reason, something to rally behind. And that is, okay. Which leads to us talking to Marty's teams, which is very more contingent than the first. Ah, Marty placed huge emphasis on that word, uh, crunch, she means. Everybody knows why you're crunching. For crunch to be successful, it needs to have specificity, Marty said. Cause for the team to rally around. You're crunching to hit a milestone, to deliver a demo, to finish a feature that you want to play test and iterate on. Um, yeah, if uh, the example that I'm thinking of is, um, if you guys seen any of the videos from Ars Technica on YouTube, uh, where they talk to various developers on how things get, uh, how they made this specific feature of their game or something that happened in their game, uh, the ones that I'm thinking of is, uh, just for example, they made one about Tiberium Summon and uh, Com Command and Conquer's Tiberium Sun, really old RTS game, but really fun too. Uh, how they cre create a Pathfinder solution, basically how to lead a bunch of different soldiers to one point, a bunch of different units to one point. Uh, but actually the example I was thinking of was in uh, the Dead Space, uh, the very first Dead Space game, where there's this sequence, uh, really a scene, uh, also like, like a playable cinematic, I forgot what they call them, but it was like uh, this giant tentacle w was like dragging Isaac from across the room. And uh, I think the studio head at the time, he really wanted to implement this feature, but it just was, it just didn't work. And so they just kept on hammering and hammering away and trying to figure out a way to get this tentacle scene, this massive, like horrific part of the game. To just work and uh, they said they lost months over it but at the end of the day they they were happy with what they got and if you play that game uh, if you play dead space you should totally play dead space by the way it's so freaking good and uh they it it turned out to be pretty damn good i, mean, I wouldn't say it's like the amazing or anything for that game because there's a lot of great things happening in that game and that wasn't one that stuck out for me in, in particular but it was pretty awesome to see that. But I can imagine something like that could be a good reason to crunch for if you want to add something to your game that may make it stand out or something like that. So, either way, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think of this uh, four day work week for IDOS Montreal? Do you think it'll work out? Do you think uh, it's awesome? Do you think it's bad? Let me know in the comments down below. Take care.